So this is a very exciting part two video episode with Jess Velarde, and you have done something that so many people have to do once they graduate and is so necessary that we often forget how necessary it is. And you had to build out your own e-commerce platform. And I know that sounds icky to say e-commerce platform, but how else do you sell your work in this day and age? Um, Walk us through, you know, the platforms you decided on, um, what you were looking to do and how you were looking to sell your work privately as opposed to going solely the gallery route. Yeah, so that's a great question. And I will start with the disclaimer that a lot of this is um, not this sort of intentional, you know, long term, well thought out marketing plan. Uh, where I have it all together and I've got this, you know, five-year plan out. Um, it's really just me looking at um, the situation in front of me, what I had in terms of an audience and, and existing collectors um, and, you know, living in the middle of a pandemic and not having a lot of opportunity to go out and try to get my work out there and saying, okay, well, what's the next step I can take? What's well, the next thing I but, can do? But that's important because one of the things that, you know, we had talked to Craig Nelson and a lot of people always tell you, the worst place to have your work is sitting in a portfolio in your closet. Yes. No one <laughs> can buy it. is where a lot of my work was from school. <laughs> right. Right. You, you actually, people got to see it to give you money for it. Yes, exactly. And so I've been sharing my work online, primarily through Instagram. We talked a bit about that in the, the previous podcast episode, but... Um, so I had this existing audience that was already buying from me really informally, really spontaneously. And so I thought, okay, I can leverage this to, you know, launch on my own. Um, there are other e-commerce platforms um, where you can tap into those if you have less of, you know, if you don't have an established community or audience that you're already connected to, um, you can use you know, platforms like Etsy, where mm -hmm. people are searching for, you know, people are already going there, they're showing up to buy artwork there, and you can put your stuff out there. Um, but I, I figured that this was the best fit for me simply where it was starting from. Sure. And, you know, there, there's Etsy and, and even eBay and, and Amazon and all sorts of this stuff where you're dealing with commissions and you're dealing with all this yeah. legal issue and yeah. stuff. But Spotify, you know, not to make uh, Shopify the world's, you know, the greatest commercial for them. Yeah. What what attracted you, you know, quickly to being to doing it on Shopify? Um, it just seemed, I, I did a bit of research on the different options and it seemed like the best one uh, that was both scalable, like there's a lot of platforms that exist um, to work for really massive, you know, online retail. Um, and so they have these, you know, these perks of like the number of transactions per day you can do or the number of users and none of that was applicable for me right you're, you're um, selling and, you're selling one-offs at this point yeah it's a, yeah it's i'm one selling thing that worked there. at this point just original artwork you know i'm gonna be really excited if i can do like a dozen sales uh so i was i wasn't looking for something that could go you know was this like massive powerful tool and that's what a lot of them are marketed as and Shopify can do that as well, but I found that their um, the the tier that I got the most basic one um, had everything I needed without overcomplicating it. Okay. So it seemed fairly intuitive, pretty user friendly. Um, I am not the most tech savvy person in the world, and so I wanted something that uh, I could you know kind of figure out how to use without having to hire a professional uh, to do it for me and. Uh, it it fit the bill for that. Um, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So so walk us through. You know, show us this. Show us your gallery and kind of walk us through um, more on really what you were looking to present because I think you know the back end. We'll we'll, we'll talk a little bit about and because I do want to get into more of like okay now I've sold a painting now what, what um, <laughs> you know like yeah I got my money who gets the painting now but show us how you really built out your your gallery and how you presented yourself in a system that is, you know, you know, basically a very basic thumbnail gallery. Yeah. So 
I opted for, um, th well, this, this launch in particular was kind of unique in that it was really just me like getting my ish together. <laughs> I had had people asking how to purchase artwork for a while. Um, and I, I knew, okay, I need to have my stuff available for people. I need to just get over this curve of learning how to do this, learning how to put it up online, accept payments, ship out a piece, how to go through this whole process. Um, and I have all of this work from, from school, from classes, from studies I've done, some from my thesis, um, in kind of an eclectic mix. Uh, so it wasn't this cohesive collection launch necessarily, but there was enough in common about the work where I felt good about sort of presenting it and putting it out there together as just here are my paintings. <laughs> it, it, it is always the strangest thing that I think a lot of artists run into. It's that weird moment when somebody goes, I want to give you money. And your brain goes, why? How? Excuse me? What? Are you sure? Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, I got to figure this out now. <laughs> yeah. And it... You know, I had solved that problem on a on a very individual basis, but it I was getting enough inquiries from random people where I, I couldn't I couldn't do that. I was taking too much of my time to try to make an individual sale each time and and chase things down and DMs. If if you're on Instagram, you know that DMs get buried very easily. It gets very chaotic, and so um, I I knew that I needed to take this step, and it really was just. I, I thought long and hard about, okay, do I finish out my thesis work and have this really beautifully curated collection release? Or do I just put out work that I am proud of, that I like, that I feel like works together, even if it's a little bit more eclectic? Um, and it, it, it worked well. And so that's kind of the background of this release. And so I, the way I organized it, I've got a featured page here where I really just put um, kind of a representation of a lot of my favorites. So a lot of them is sold, as you'll see. Um, Shopify does this automatically whenever something sells. You set the quantity that's available to one, because obviously each is just an original. Um, and once someone purchases it, it says sold out like that. Um, and so it does that automatically. I don't have to worry about it, which is great. Um, and which is I, also a nice thing to show people that your work is moving. Yeah. Which is a, it's yeah. a nice little, you, you missed out. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. You'll <laughs> exactly. To, you'll have to wait till the next Not to release. rub it in, but also yeah, a little you'll bit. Get, you'll get one. Don't worry. Don't worry. You'll come. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I just put some of honestly, my personal favorites that I felt like fit nicely together on, on this page. And, um, the, the way that Shopify works, you select a theme that you can then adjust. So I picked a very basic design for, for my theme. I want to ask um, you about that. Cause I've seen with other shop, uh, Shopify plat, uh, pages that they're working in the square format and your work is not necessarily square. So you have picked some images where you're actually showing it framed, showing it in the space it's going to be. And we can, we can pull one of those up. Yeah. How, how, how was that for you, you know, having to, you know, be boxed in literally into a box? Literally. Um, so, so part of that is kind of interesting because I've been on Instagram for so many years now that I'm, I'm used to thinking about things in terms of the grid design wise. Um, and so that felt very intuitive. Um, I actually, the, the theme that I have allows you to have your thumbnail images. So if we go back to the, the featured page, it allows you to have these thumbnail images um, as you know, not a square, but I just felt like it looked best with all of them the same size. So I actually went in and I cropped these to be uh, a square for, for the feature uh, thumbnail. Um, and then I have, I use that as kind of a close up, and then I have the full image of the painting and then a kind of styled uh, image where honestly how I did this though, is I, I went out in my backyard, I put down a large canvas as a white background. I set down frames 
And then I put in, I had some greenery or whatever I wanted to style around it. And then I placed in each painting as a flat lay and I shot it, you know, from above. Um, so I didn't have to hang each painting, you know. To well, well, that makes sense. Cause I mean, that was one thing that I know you and I were talking about when we did the podcast. And then I know Craig and I talked to quite a bit about that, that a lot of times the work, there's the heady art collector. I want art to collect and invest in. And then there's, I like that painting and it's going to fit the color palette of my wall, which is such a weird way to look at it when you're, you know, because when you're in school, you're like, how dare you? And when you're out in the real world, it's like, would you like one in blue? Would you like one in green? Would you like several colors for all of your rooms, please? Yeah, we, we like to think we're above, you know, the decorative like, like it's perceived as this, like there's fine, you know, fine art. And then there's like decor and it's, there, things aren't that delineated in real life. You know, we, we don't, those things don't actually exist in separate boxes. Yeah. Craig, Craig would give me a very polite earful. He's like, do you want to get paid? Do you want to sell a lot of paintings? Maybe that interior decorator will buy 15 paintings. I'm like, wow, 15 paintings. I should not be a jerk about this. I should, <laughs> I should make this easy for you to purchase my work. Be a little more open. Yeah. Oh, totally. And I do in the future, I want to have a little bit more fun with, with that element because I really do. I love design. I have a, a background in interiors. And so I nerd out about that kind of stuff with this. It, I was just getting it all together um, fair, fairly quickly within a, mm -hmm. within a few weeks. And um kind of opted for the most streamlined, streamlined, um, the, the easiest way I could do it well. Okay. Well, wa walk us through your portraits and figures, because I know you've got it into two different segments. You, you have your yeah, portraits so and figures. I organized it with, I have that feature page with some of my favorites. Um, and then as you can go through into categories, I've got portraits and figures, florals and landscapes, and then a uh, sale section. Um, and this is, so you'll notice that these are, um, it's four wide and that is just the theme that I selected. That's how they're organized. Um, and so I like that I had that option on the main page to have them a little bit bigger, a little bit more um, kind of highlighted, highlighted yeah. and displayed. Um, and then as you go into the different options, you can see. L let's can talk see about the, 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 the two, you know, how you've presented this is very well thought out. Uh, I know you're saying, you know, I, I just got it together and done, but it, there's a, <laughs> there is a lot of thinking behind this from a, dare I say, retail perspective. Um, in that, for example, you have your borrowed hope in the top left there, uh, and then you have the light you carry. And, you know, I noticed in your press kit and on your website, and then here again, in that hero image of the light you carry, you've really put it into context and put it into a scene what was your thinking behind doing your photography that way as opposed to just boom there's the image yeah so i i i love this because it it really tells the story you know you can do this in a way where it tells a story of a work kind of displayed in a well-decorated home and people can imagine it in their space with this one um it more so tells a story of the creation of the work you know i i pulled the tubes of paint and the colors that i used in the actual painting um obviously the painting is done at this point i did not take this image when i was making it i took it long afterwards but i wanted to kind of bring the viewer in to this very like intimate artist perspective of my studio um, and, and that was the thinking. And that's a lot of what I do when I share on social media um, and even in the imagery that I'm, I'm doing uh, for my website, for the shop, all of that. I want to bring people in, not just to the, the nicely displayed end result, but into the process of creating the piece. Well, and it does give it that I am hiring or excuse me, I am buying a work of art that has been painted by hand by a person who is an artist. 
as opposed to, you know, a printed canvas, which you do see a lot of more and more. Uh, and then, and, but this is an actual one-off handcrafted piece of art, which I think people do need that subtle reminder when, you know, we're looking at, at this stuff. Talk to me about the copy as well. I mean, you, you're, every bit of your imagery has quite a bit of, you know, very well thought out copy. Um, what was the, uh, how, how did you get that much copy going? Because that's a hard part for everybody. <laughs> that's a good question. Um, th- this one's a great example because it's from my thesis series. Um, and so, you know, anyone from the academy knows how much work you have to put into writing about your work. <laughs> um, and so I had a lot of practice with that. I'd already written a lot about this particular series. And so I pulled from that. Um, I pulled from my artist statement actually for this because my goal with the individual listing is really to um, not just give someone the practical details, although that's hugely important. You know, what is the size, the depth? What are the the things about this that you need to know um, if you're going to put it up in your home? Um, but also, what's the story of it? How how can you give someone another layer uh, that they can feel emotionally connected to. Um, What does this piece mean? What can it mean to them? Um, What does it mean to me? And, you know, leaning into that as much as possible uh, because art is such a, like, we don't buy art for practical reasons, at least not, you know, one of a kind original handmade paintings. Uh, We buy them for emotional reasons because we feel connected or inspired or, you know, they make you feel something and that leads you to want to bring it into your home. And so anything I can do in the copy to lean into that, it's such a great opportunity to be able to do that. Um, I will, you know, on the flip side of that, I had almost 40 listings. So I'm not going to sit here (laughs) by no means. Am I going to sit here and write like, 40 different, you know, miniature, 40 short stories. <laughs> yeah, no, no way. So let's, let's open up one, one that sold, um, with these, uh, portraits, I actually used the same copy for the majority of these portraits because they're from the same series. I'm doing like an ongoing series of portrait studies And they're really coming from the same place of, you know, evoking a strong emotion through light and shadow and really expressive brushwork. And so I don't need to reinvent the wheel and find a new way, you know, 40 different ways to say that, or, you know, 20 different ways to say that, however many portraits I have on here. Um, And I don't think people mind because they're going to click on the image that resonates with them. And once they're there, they're going to be in dialogue with that, that copy. Um, And so I, I tried to minimize the amount of work for myself by by doing that. Um, And then of course the details change depending on, on the, the painting, you know, the size and material substrate, all of that. But what are some of the best uh, pieces you have up the pieces that are really your favorite that uh, once you put them up in the shop, you're like, Oh, wow, this, this really, this really came out really well. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so it's really interesting because, uh, my, some of my favorites haven't sold yet, um, which I'm kind of okay with. There's a couple that I'm like, oh, I, you know, if this doesn't sell, I'm, I'm, I might put it on my wall. <laughs> um, some of the portrait studies I think are, are my favorites. This one in particular. Um, I was going to say that, that one is very striking. That is a very nice good, powerful image. Yeah. I love how this one came out. I love, um, the light and shadow and, um, it was part of, it's part of the ongoing series of portrait studies that I'm doing, um, which are really just a way to keep in practice, um, to keep painting and in a very kind of low pressure environment. So with these, I don't, I do use reference images, um, but I don't plan them out very extensively. So with the double exposure floral pieces or larger works, I usually put a good amount of planning and thought into the design of the piece. With these, I let myself play. I let myself be more spontaneous. 
And so like with this one, um, that bright coral red in the background was a spontaneous decision in the moment, <laughs> and, which you're not supposed to do. <laughs> I know I, you're not supposed to make a, a big, you know, color choice like that. You're supposed to think about the theory and plan it out. And, you know, so th these portraits are kind of my space to play and just work intuitively um, and to, you know, hope that the stuff I learned in school is somehow, you know, rolling around my brain and coming out. But I don't I don't have to worry about it. I kind of just just paint and play. Oh, okay. um, and and because uh, this piece, I made that decision on this piece, just spur of the moment. I, I think I'll do a bright red background. It wasn't in the reference. Um, but I, I love how it came out and just the way it pulls those blues in the shadows and her skin. Um, I just, I love the way it came out and it, it really represents that spontaneity, um, for me and kind of the emotion in it, uh, just worked it, yeah, it, it's it's a, it. it's, it's a great it's a great it's one yeah it's one of those pieces where you can go I just like it you know I could I can give you a lot of great you know arts artsy terms but I I just dig it yeah. Um, yeah walk us through the other gallery you have which is your floral and uh, landscape series because yeah, so, that has that's a, a kind of a different vibe and you'll to notice together the most obvious thing when we scroll through here is a lot of these sold such a shame we can't look at all of them but good for everybody else who now gets some <laughs> art hanging on their well, wall and we can we can pull them up uh you know look look closer at the actual listings here um but yeah those the florals do i i was not surprised by this um a lot of my community is will show up for the portraits. That's what does best on social media. That's what seems to resonate with people most. But, and a lot of them do sell, um, but not nearly as much as florals. Mm. Whereas ironically, floral, floral paintings will not do as well on social media. They don't go viral. They don't get a lot of attention, but they will without fail sell. Interesting, interesting. Um, and I think that's because you know, just by the nature of people are much more likely to want to live with an image of flowers on their wall. And sure, that sure. resonates with them um, compared, you know, you have to, you have to feel very connected to a portrait or to the meaning behind it, um, particularly a portrait of someone you don't know, yeah. of a, a stranger. Um, you have to feel very connected to that, to want to bring that into your home and live with it on your wall, uh, which a lot of people do. That's, the, the market for that is definitely there. Um, but for my community, for my audience, I knew the florals were going to be what does really well. So, so let, let's go through now, you know, the back end of this. I mean, anybody can go on Shopify or whatever, or whatever platform and, and figure it out. How much time did it really brain suck doing this? Was it, was it, oh my gosh, this is going to take forever. Or was it, oh, I kind of should have did this a long time ago. <laughs> Um, both. It was so <laughs> both. Um, creating the listings was mind-numbingly painful on on some level. Um, primarily because I had so many. So doing like doing the I hadn't done any of this. I was new to all of it, and so organizing my email list and getting the right software for that figured out um inputting all of those addresses you know designing the email announcement um posting about it on social media setting up shopify setting up the payments doing each individual listing photographing everything essentially you know just all of it together is a very a nice full-time job yeah yeah <laughs> weeks of work um, thankfully, you know, now that I've done that, the next time I release a painting for sale or a group of paintings for sale, I don't have to do all of it, you know, I, or I know how to do it. So it's going to take me a lot less time. Mm, okay. Um, so a big part of the, the work up front for me was the learning curve of doing it all for the first time. Um, and just, you know, I released 40 paintings, so <laughs> that's a lot. Um, so the, just the amount, the sheer amount of work 
and the learning curve of doing it all as a beginner was a bit overwhelming up front. However, now that that's done and I've like got it under my belt, I feel a lot more confident doing it again. Um, I know it'll take me a lot less time next time. Um, it'll still take a lot of time, but not quite, not quite as much. Um, and once I got everything up, I was actually shocked at how easy the actual like sales and fulfillment process was. I was going to ask you about that because the, 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 seeing your work up brings up one big question I want to ask you about. That's the more artsy, ethereal style. Uh, but I do want to ask you about now that your work is selling. What was that process like? Not the, yay, I sold paintings, because I'm sure that happens every time. Every time the ding goes off, yeah. yay, I still <laughs> sell a painting. Uh, even when I get my paycheck now, it's like, yay, I got paid. Um, but actually, like now I've gotten the payment, and I've got a painting, and now this has to go to somebody. What was some of those things you had to learn? Like, oh, I have to get you this painting now. Yes. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, so I've shipped, pa- I've sold paintings informally online before, like through PayPal or Venmo, give me your address, I'll ship this to you. So I had done that part of packaged paintings. Um, and I've, I've worked for artists before. And so I have, and it's something you cover in professional practices at the Academy as well. It's like how to actually, you know, pack and ship your work. Um, and because most of these are small studies, um, a lot of them are 11 by 14, eight by 10 or less. Um, they're easy, easy to ship. I used like flat bubble wrap. And the, these are, they're on, they're on stretched canvases already. They're not, they're not um, unstretched. A lot of them are on stretched canvases, okay. but they're only a uh, half or three quarter inch thick. Okay. And then a lot of the studies that I did are on panels or like canvas panels or cause these are very much like quick studies mm. or from, from classes I've done. Okay. Um, or I did them while traveling. So some of them were on loose canvas. Um, that was honestly most of my time doing the listings was going back and go, what substrate is this painting on? <laughs> and how do I describe that? And because I had so many different ones, that's one thing I would do differently is next time I release a body of work, it'll all be on the same substrate because mm-hmm. it was so much work to, to navigate that. And then giving people, um, you know, different directions on like, Here's a, what I recommend. To an 80 pound thing. acid free compressed fiber board with a white accent unbleached. Oh, you mean paper. It's on paper. Yeah, yes, it's yeah, on paper. Yeah. Got it. I okay. didn't get, I was not, I was like, this is on loose canvas. <laughs> like I was, I was not, I didn't, I didn't dress it up. Um, and that's honestly, that's why I had, um, I have that studio sale section because a lot of these are on substrates that I, that don't feel quite as luxurious. I'm like, okay, this was a study I did on like, you know, Blick canvas board. And I, but I love the painting, you know, I love how it turned out. And so I feel good about releasing it, but I want to make sure that person is getting a good value because it's on this substrate that doesn't feel as luxurious as a, a gallery wrapped canvas. And so so a I lot, a lot of, a lot of trips to Staples and Office Depot, but nothing wacky or weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So just um, boxes so, and bubble wrap. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of it was recycled stuff. I, I knew I was going to be doing this. And so the past couple months I saved all our Amazon boxes and packaging. And, there you go. <laughs> and use that. Um, but the, the best part, the smoothest part of this process, honestly, was, um, the Shopify system for shipping. Um, So I can't speak to what other platforms are like for this, but with Shopify, um, someone puts in all their information and you just, you pull up the order, you, you say what size package. So I, I pack up the painting. I put a little thank you note in there. It's all ready to go. I put in the dimensions of the package, the weight. I just used our, like, I have a food scale that I used oh, to go. weigh the <laughs> package. Um, Here, I'll stand on the scale and you give it to yeah, me yeah, and yeah. I'll hold it. And 19 <laughs> yeah. pounds. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you just put in that information and then say print label. 
and it prints it. Oh, and and so within strange. that, you know, on that screen is the, the name of the order, a thumbnail image of what they purchased. So the margin for error of like accidentally sending someone the wrong painting is very low. <laughs> it's all very clear. I was so nervous about that. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Um, but it, it's all very clear. It's all very organized. Um, you get a discount on shipping if you sign up to print all your labels and do everything through Shopify. So it's cheaper than actually purchasing through USPS or UPS or whatever. Mm. Oh, uh, wow. Which is what I did before. Well, that um, good. And, and the, the best thing I did with this launch was buy a label printer. Life changing. You didn't want to just hand write out 500 labels. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Well, what I did before was print them on like a normal printer, yeah, and then cut it out and tape it on, right? Which to do that like a dozen times is oh, that takes a lot of time. Um, so I purchased. I just went online, um, went on Amazon, and I found uh, it's an inkless uh, label printer. Oh, cool. Um, and it was like. I think it was around like 150 bucks. So a, a decent investment, but um, it prints out on the sticker. Like it just right the perfect size. I never have to buy ink for it, which is going to pay for itself and yep. pretty quickly. Um, and so that was, that made things so smooth and easy. And you just take it, plop well, it on I the, mean, the I'll, package I'll, and drop it. But, yeah. Cause a lot of the things you're talking about really go to the, the professionalism. I mean, there, there is the, there is the art itself and part of, you know, what galleries talk about is, you know, there's the network, there is the professionalism, there's the guidance, which is still very valuable. And, and at some point I'm sure uh, you will be in galleries as well. And so, I mean, there is, that's and, my and, goal, you know, post yeah. pandemic. <laughs> and, and, and for all artists, we now know that, you know, it's not just, it, it is Instagram. It is selling yourself. It is galleries because they're different customers and, customers are Both important and. um that you know presenting yourself in a way where it's like oh i'm giving this person money and i feel confident about it i want to ask you about that um pricing i know that's a tough one and that is open to a lot of interpretation and i know there's all these matrices and and equations and and then a lot of uh how much you got in your pocket um how did you determine where you wanted to start with pricing? This is a great question. So I, I used a linear inch model for okay. pricing my work um, that has overall with some adapting worked really well for me. Um, and I, when I decided to do this launch because of all the investing I was doing in um the actual launch, you know, so getting it up in this professional way, having all the utilizing all these tools and also the level the that my work was at. Now I did decide to raise my prices oh, good. Um, a bit before I, so with everything I put up on this launch, I raised the prices a bit from what I had been doing um, with spontaneous sales. Well, no, that um, makes sense. You, you do have now a back end to pay for. Yeah. So I have to cover all this additional yeah. work. And ultimately it does streamline things and it does make things e easier. Um, but upfront it's a, it's a lot of work. Um, and so I, what I did, I used my same, uh, linear inch model for pricing, but I adapted it slightly based on, um, so as, as I get larger for some of those, it, it, I felt like I needed to bring it up or down a little bit. Um, depending on the complexity of the piece. And then for the very small ones as well, um, that price felt a little bit high. So I brought it down a little. So it was really just, it was kind of, I had this um, equation that I used, but then I, I adapted it intuitively, uh, particularly on either end of the scale. Um, the reason I also, I touched on it a little bit, but doing the studio sale, um, because a lot of these are, are quick studies, a lot of them I did for school, many of them on, um, you know, less glamorous substrates. Um, I, and also I knew my audience, my community is starting from a place of they're used to a different 
price for those who have purchased from me or who have reached out before. Um, and so I wanted to keep a level of accessibility without devaluing the work. Um, I wanted no, that, that's, to- That's a great point, yeah. yeah. And that so makes- I, doing a sale felt like the, the right solution where I'm able to make this work more accessible, but they can see, you know, physically written there what the, what the value of it is. Uh, and that, that's an interesting thing because I noticed, I mean, it's, it's not a new thing, but as we are now looking at everything online constantly, you see it more and more that you, you know, we have artists have always done the inexpensive stuff. You have your, you know, your, your first graduate pieces where, you know, pieces under a hundred pieces, under a thousand pieces, yeah. under 2000, um, sketchbook pages, um, all sorts of you know, valuable pieces that, you know, it's like, well, this is not really the most expensive piece, but if someone's going to start collecting you, um, it's a good way, it's a good entry point. And, uh, and this goes across even with photography. I know I reached recently purchased for a first time in a long time. Um, uh, Magnum photo had does their six by six sale. So it's a hundred dollars for a six by six print. Some of them are signed. Some of them are state stamped. You're like, wow, I, 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 I can afford that. I can't afford yeah. a proper archival. I mean, these are archival gray, but I can't afford a 16 by 20 archival Mario Testino photo. Yeah. My wife won't <laughs> let me. It's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I got no place to yeah. put it. And uh, apparently my birthday and Christmas gift is not going to cover that. <laughs> yeah. um, but but an affordable, you know, under $200, even under a $100 price point is yeah. a great way for someone to start building a collection. Totally. And that's where a lot of my community is at. Um, and I was very aware of that and wanting to be sensitive to that as I did this launch. And so even though ultimately I do want to have, have my work in galleries, I do want to be doing larger pieces that are at that much, much higher end price point. Um, I, so much of my audience and my community right now it, you know, they're not, they're not at the place, nor am I, where I can, I can, you know, drop thousands of dollars on an original painting, maybe someday, but it's certainly not in my life right now. And so I wanted to have my, my people be able to collect my work. Um, you know, people who are, are in the same life situation as I am, where it's like, oh, I, I can't drop thousands of dollars on, on, uh, an original painting, but I, I could do a couple hundred. Right. Um, exactly. Which is great. Cause, you know. And so, yeah, this is, you know, post graduation, I'm still, I'm still learning how to do this. I'm just now kind of putting myself out there. It really is the perfect opportunity to make my work available, um, in that way right now. So last question to kind of wrap it up, because I mean, this has been extremely valuable and, you know, everyone's going to go to just dot just dash velarity dash art dot my shopify.com or far simpler just to just Yeah. You go to my website and you click shop. The big word that says shop, go there, buy some stuff. But one of the things that I think is interesting, um, you know, you're talking about, you know, where my work is going, what's happening, seeing my work. Um, if somebody comes to your site, very immediately, if the if commissions are on their mind, they get a good perspective of what you do. For you as the artist, now that you're seeing your work in a sales platform, it's very similar to your website. A website has the more that more ethereal, artistic. Here's my process. Here's my thinking, and and why we're doing something, and oftentimes our favorite pieces. But in a e-commerce icky word, e-commerce platform, but, necess- you, it's but necessary, <laughs> you look at it and go for you now as the artist, what do you see as something that you now want to start developing? What is, where do you think your work can go or what spaces do you go? Wow. Looking at this, I go, man, maybe this is the, a path I want to take. It's a good question. Um, I, I definitely, I feel like with the thesis project that I did, which is this, the double exposure series of figures and faces um, seen through this like veil of uh, florals and foliage. Um, I see myself doing that on like a massive scale. So doing these really large, um, you know, pieces of similar compositions, but just 
very big. Big wall um, pieces. Beautiful. My current studio setup at home probably can't facilitate that at the moment, but ultimately, you know, over the next few years, that's definitely where I see my work going. Um, so I, yeah, that, that's what I picture. I think the next, um, the next big thing would be leaning into that series more, probably starting smaller, eventually getting bigger, um, and finding a place locally where I can show that work because, um, although I do want to make it available on online and on the shop, um, that, that series, and there, there are a couple of them in here, some of the earliest, uh, paintings. So, um, Borrowed Hope and The Light You Carry, those two are from this, the series. They're some of the earlier ones that I did. Um, but as I've developed it, there's so much nuance and detail in, in that, and we can see. I can hop over to my website here. This is this is one of those images, and um, I want this to be shown in in person. Um, and so, I and hopefully with the pandemic potentially <laughs> maybe changing, um, that can happen. Um, but yeah, it. I guess that's a little bit of an ironic answer that now that I've done this, I've put my work up on online. I have this online store. Um, what it makes me want to do is show my work in person. <laughs> well, but that, but that's great. That, that, I think that's one of those things that, you know, if, if, if anybody watching this has at least the takeaway of if you get your work up and out of the portfolio, out of the closet, there's still that push to go, well, now do more work. Now keep going. Look at what look at what you have done, and now what can you do on top of that? Because now we can see that your work, we can see your progression better, and then there's always that same idea of like that's great, but what does it cost? And then oh, okay, this is where you know you as an artist and and then a collector or somebody just even you know not even quite a collector just goes that's a beautiful piece of art. I'd like to have it on my wall. Can go there's you there's the piece. Now I understand what to do. Um, and I think that's, that's great. I think that's a great inspiration for anybody looking at, you know, how to make money and, oh, this really is a, a craft and, uh, uh, a skill.